to this Eclipse tutorial series. My name is Michael Traeger, and I created these videos while finishing my master's degree at Duke University. This tutorial series was funded by the Medical Physics Graduate Program at Duke University. These tutorials will be focused on providing an introduction for students in the Duke Medical Physics Graduate Program with respect to a project they will complete during their radiation therapy class, but can be extended as a useful tool for any beginner Eclipse users. As a disclaimer, these videos are not meant for use as guides for clinical applications, including treatment planning on real patients, rather as a good starting point to familiarize new Eclipse users. I'm not affiliated with varying medical systems or with the ARIA software at this time, and am by no means an expert user. In this video series, I will cover the basics of the Eclipse interface, getting started with the treatment plan, contouring strategies, basic 3D planning, IMRT planning, and how to analyze plans. I'll be working with Eclipse version 13.6 and ARIA version 13.6. Alright, let's get started. This is the second video of the Eclipse tutorial series, Getting Started. In this video, I'll discuss the basics in starting your first treatment plan. This includes opening a patient, importing a CT scan, setting the CT zero, creating a course and plan, and creating a treatment field. Let's begin by discussing how to open a patient from the external beam planning main menu. There are a few different ways to open a patient. If the patient already exists, we can simply search for the patient as I discussed in the first tutorial with this text box at the top. If we would like to create a new patient, however, we can go into the File menu and select New Patient. We then get in this window that allows us to enter all of the patient's information and then select OK. Another option for opening a patient is to import images into a new patient that we would like to create. Let's import images for a new patient that we will work with throughout the rest of these tutorials. To do so, we can select Import slash Export from the DICOM option in the Quick Links dropdown. This launches a new Import slash Export window. We can then make sure we're on the Import selection, click DICOM File Import, and click Next. This will load all of the CTs and other images that are in the current directory. We can change the directory by selecting this button with three dots. Once the images are all loaded, we can select the ones that we want to import and click Next. For now, we'll select Series 865 that has these images associated with it. Then click Next. This will now read all of the images into the system. Once the images are loaded, we can either select a patient that would be open or in the directory, or click New Patient. Let's leave all of the patient information the same as it was when the CT scan was taken. Once we have our information, we can select OK. Now that we have created our new patient, we can click Next. We now connect the images that we loaded into the new patient that we created. We can leave generate volumetric images because this will put all of the slices together and create a 3D volume. If you had a 4D CT, we can select the generate 4D images option, but we do not. Click next. Now it'll save all these images to the patient in our systems database. Now it gave us a summary that all of the images successfully transferred over to the patient. We can now go back to our external beam planning menu. All the images that we just loaded are now here. You can see all the images that were loaded on this top left window. Right now the scout image is open, but let's drag the CT into the viewing plane so that we can look at it. I will now discuss how to import a CT scan to a patient that already exists in the database and that is already currently open. So to do so, we can use the import wizard. So we'll go to File, 
import wizard. We can now select the directory that we would like to look in. We can then change the directory to a specific folder that we're interested in. We'll open that folder and then all of the CT images in that folder will pop up. We can select all and then go to the next step. We can now select the patient that we would like to put these images into. As we did before, we can select a new patient, or we can just do current patient, which is the one that we have open right now. Now it shows all of the CT images on the left-hand side, as well as the images that we already have on the right-hand side. So we can select Finish, and these images are now being imported into that patient. As you can see, now we have series 866 as well as 865, each with their own CT scan. Another important skill is knowing how to set the CT origin, or in other words, moving the CT origin so that it coincides with the laser origin at the time of CT simulation. This is indicated by BBs for our patients. This is sometimes performed automatically by some CT manufacturer systems and would therefore not be necessary. To change the CT origin, first move the viewing windows to the location that the CT origin should be assigned to. For our case, we'll just move to a random viewing plane since our origin is already correct. Then we can right click on the user origin and select set user origin. Now it allows us to enter three coordinates. The coordinates of our current viewing plane are indicated at the bottom left hand corner of each viewing plane by the red. So let's change those now. Our x coordinate is negative 2.53, our y coordinate is still 0, and our z coordinate is negative 4.19. We could then hit apply, and our CT0 or CT origin has been moved. As you'll notice, now the coordinates at this location are 0, 0, 0. This will be useful to know for our isocenter shift later on when we create a treatment plan. Now that we have our patient and the necessary images, we can start treatment planning. The first thing we will need to do is create a course. We can do this by either going into the insert menu and clicking new course, or simply by right-clicking on the patient and selecting New Course. Our patient here is called Demo1. As you will see from these tutorials, there are usually at least two equivalent ways to do everything, and you will choose your preference as you get more familiar with the software. A course is used to store multiple plans. Clinically, a course is used for each round of treatment a patient receives. For example, the first time a patient comes in, a course will be created for them, typically named C1. If that patient needs to return for future treatments, a second course will be created, typically named C2. Courses are useful for storing previous treatments, separating different treatment sites, and keeping non-clinical PANs separate when doing research, training, or quality assurance. They should be descriptively named to avoid treatment confusion. For this tutorial, let's name our course C99. This is usually what we call a research course. We can then set our intent. For now, we'll choose curative and then select OK. So as you can see now, our course will pop up on this left-hand side. Now that we have our course, we can create a plan. Similarly to creating a course, we can create a plan by either going to the Insert menu and clicking New Plan, or we can right-click on our course and select New Plan. We'll be given a series of prompts when creating a new plan. First, we can select what course we want to put this plan into. So the only course we have now is our C99 course. We can also select a new course if we'd like. Next, we must choose a target volume. We'll typically have a PTV structure from contouring to use as our target volume. So for now, we'll leave no target volume. We can now select a reference point, which I discussed in a previous tutorial. But since we don't have any, we'll just select none. 
Then we can select the patient positioning for during the treatment. This can vary based on the treatment site, the patient's limitations, and physician preference. We will select head first supine since this is the most common treatment position, but this treatment position should match whatever treatment position was used for the CT simulation. Lastly, we can input various plan parameters such as the plan ID, which is the name associated with the plan that will come up on the left side of the screen and when searching for a plan, the plan intent, and some of the options we already decided on in previous steps such as the target volume, reference point, and patient positioning. Also, we can input and view dose information, prescription information, technical information about the plan such as DICOM info, the calculation models being used, any plan comments, and if there's any equipment associated with the plan using these various tabs at the top. So we can then select OK, and our plan is inserted, Plan 1. Directly after creating a plan, we'll be prompted to insert our first treatment field. We do not have to do this right now, however, so we will cancel for now. Once our plan is created, we can see the images and structures associated with our plan down here on the left side. This will be your treatment planning interface and should be familiar to the first tutorial video. As a quick reminder, we have our transverse, coronal, sagittal, and 3D views of the patient. We also have our fields and other information down here, so dose prescription, etc. The left side shows our courses and plans on top, as well as our structures, images, dose information, and fields down below. Now that our plan is set up, let's create our first treatment field, or beam. I will go into treatment planning strategies in a future video, but for now let's understand what we can do with treatment fields. To add a field, we can either go to the insert menu and select new field, or right click on the plan we have created and select new field. I hope you're starting to realize that most things we want to insert into our plan can be done in a similar fashion. When we insert a field, the first thing that we will need to do is select the treatment machine. This is important when planning because you need to consider what treatment techniques, beam modifiers, energies, and dose rates, as well as other treatment parameters, are commissioned for each machine. Selecting a machine here will indicate which commissioning and beam data to use for dose calculations. Let's choose the XTX Gray. This is a variant true beam STX unit that is commissioned for radio surgery. Now there are some parameters that we must input before the beam can be created. A red dot or orange highlighted area in the window indicates required parameters that still need to be entered. Let's file these red dots until we have a completed beam. First we must choose the technique. Depending on our technique, we may need to input more parameters before having an acceptable beam. We can select a static beam, an arc beam used for dynamic arcs and VMAT technique, or SRS beams. Specifying an SRS beam here allows the beam to have more total monitor units. Otherwise, it would require a manual override at the treatment console. It does not necessarily change the beam parameters. Let's choose an arc technique since it requires more inputs. With an arc, we must specify the gantry's rotational range. For now, let's do 0 to 180 degrees in a clockwise fashion. For all beams, we will need to enter the beam energy and the dose rate. For now, let's choose a 6x beam with a 600 monitor unit per minute dose rate. These are all the basic inputs necessary for creating a beam, but let's see what else we can do. We can edit the collimator parameters, such as the collimator rotation and the field sizes defined by the jaws. We can also change the couch rotation and the isocenter for the current beam. All these parameters are also accessible through the Fields tab at the bottom of the screen as I described in the first tutorial. We can also change the specific room geometry information. This includes the couch and the imager parameters. If we want to use an accessory for a beam, we can choose that here. These include wedges, cutouts, SRS mounts, cones, blocks, trays, compensators, and more. All accessories that are commissioned for the current treatment unit will show up here. We also have room for comments, setup notes, reference images, and calculation information. So this includes the beam weighting. Once we finish our inputs, we can click OK and our beam will be created and show up on the left under our field section here. As I mentioned earlier, many of the beam parameters for each added field can be edited down at the bottom over here. 
but we can also pull up the field parameters window by right clicking on field and selecting properties. So this is the same window that we had before and all the things that we entered can be changed. We can also right click and select properties for the plan, the course, and many other things to change the parameters that we have already input. One nice feature about fields is that we can copy and paste them to mimic the parameters of an already existing field. So we can either right click and select copy field or simply do control C and then right click and do paste field or control V. This can help increase your planning efficiency. There are also many other things you can do with fields to increase the quality of your plans as well as tricks that can help you plan faster and more efficiently. You will see me use many of these in future videos and you will discover many features as you get more experienced. Thank you for watching this video in the Eclipse tutorial series. I hope you now understand how to get started with your own Eclipse plan and some of the things you can do with treatment fields. In the next video, we'll go through contouring. I'll discuss the image registration, selection, and contouring workspaces, as well as how to create and edit contours, how to create your own virtual phantom, and some contouring strategies. Thank you and I'll see you next time.